in the world that 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 logic follows also and you said that you said that, that would be correct. Yeah, it's very similar to what Jesus said of of my kingdom is not of this world, I'm calling you out of the world. The world is is false perception. It's a set of constructs that were made up to take the place of truth. Uh, and so, as you start to go deeper to the kingdom of heaven is within, oftentimes people will say, you know, like they'll quote the old uh, kind of Buddhist saying, you know, before enlightenment, you know, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. When you get into metaphysics, you start to realize that what you do comes from what you think. And that when you start to really empty your mind of concepts, then the mind is like naturally drawn into this sense of stillness. Uh, and progressively the Holy Spirit has to work with exchanging self-concepts so that the mind gradually loosens from that identification with that false self-concept. So, for most people, most people are given a pretty slowly evolving curriculum um, because it would induce panic. I mean, occasionally you have someone like Eckhart Tolle that has an, a, this, such a blazing experience on a park bench or at some point that it's almost like, it's like there's such a, a massive transformation that, that it's very, very rapid and it seems to have just be consistent, you know, it seems to just stay. But for most, the mind is highly invested in the ego, and it's going to involve what seems to be a lot of steps. So we could say situations like jobs, occupations, families, and so forth. At times, they've even been taught, called by some teachers, some people will say, you know, you have relationship classrooms and career classrooms, and on and on and on and on. The mind is the classroom. Uh, there are no classrooms in this world. That metaphor really is, is actually quite a poor metaphor when you go much deeper into the mind. Because the mind and everything is, like we've shared in the quantum physics movies and these last movies, that, that everything that's going on is going on in mind. And even the idea that there is a physical world that has an existence in and of itself is just another concept. Uh, it, and it's when the question is asked, you know, can you be, can you be in the world but not of it? You really have to go into what that means, because that's another phrase that gets used a lot, in in a kind of a justifying way, you know. Well, I'm in the world and I'm I'm not of it. But when you go much deeper into mysticism and you go much deeper into the mind, you start to realize that that the things and the constructs and the concepts that seem to have meaning before start just to fall away, like just like shells or like layers of skin that no longer have a purpose. While you're going through the mind training, they seem to be very meaningful and the Holy Spirit's using them. And there, there's a lot of reciprocity that's involved in those. There's still ideas of, of exchange that are part of those symbols. Uh, there are even spiritual communities that will, you know, try to like set it up almost like in a business model where they have, uh, they've got a business going on or businesses going on and income streams coming in to support that and they have, they're subject to the same economic conditions, the fluctuations in the stock market and so on and so forth. And true mysticism, you know, just goes so much inward beyond all of that, uh, that, that basically you're being taken into a state of mind where you're just like watching the world and there's not a, any kind of sense of personal involvement in the world. So as long as the mind's invested in the, the persona and the, and the concept of the persona, it's very meaningful during this slowly evolving curriculum that the spirit will use lots of different backdrops for the mind training. And then, um, actually, there, get, there comes a point where it's like a, a real sense of just letting it behind, like, it, like the concepts <laughs> no longer serve. There's teachers, mystics like Ramana Maharshi, you know, he, he had his 
experiences when he was in his late teens, and then just basically left his his mother, his father, his brother, and went down to this mountain, Arunachala, and spent most of his life just in this state of silence, this deep silence. And then it became so deep that people came from all over the world just to come and sit in his presence. Because it was such a, a strong feeling of that peace. It wasn't, it wasn't the body of Ramana, but people came just to be around the presence that was like emanating and radiating there. So, when Jesus has lessons in a workbook like, The world I see holds nothing that I want, which is lesson 128, he actually means that. Uh, I remember when I first was reading that lesson, I, I got to the sentence where he says, The only value that this world has, and I, when he starts off the sentence like that, I'm like, Oh, oh right, come on, <laughs> tell me, tell me, what is it do? is that you pass it by. <laughs> you know, I mean, he just goes once again into that thing, you know, and no longer look for hope, you know, kind of where there is none. You know, it's, uh, some of you have heard of the Gospels of Thomas, and uh, it comes through in different translations. Uh, if you've read Your Immortal Reality by Gary Renard, you know, he talks quite a lot about, you know, Persa, talks about the Gospels of Thomas, and and I remember going through the Gospels of Thomas, and uh, I, one of them was so short, I thought, wow, this is, a, this is not even a sentence, it's just two words. It was, be passers-by. <laughs> I thought, what a teaching. <laughs> be yeah. passers-by. I mean, just the very words, passers-by, you know. It's like... To be able to watch the world without having any investment in it. And when you start to look at the constructs of the world, it didn't matter whether you would seem to be a doctor, a nurse, a construction worker, a lawyer, uh, uh, a high school teacher, I mean all the different occupations, a CEO, uh, if, you know, you could go on. You can see that all of these professions and all of these occupations have uh, a, a lot of intertwined concepts that are part of them. And that there is a state which literally transcends these concepts in which everything still seems to be taken care of. You know, nothing is, is uh, challenged or nothing is out of place. But the mind is freed from identifying with those concepts. There are no outcomes that matter anymore. Uh, like to a CEO, supply and demand, or uh, profit, uh, would still have uh, an importance. Anybody who, who was a professional anything, trying to earn money for something else, you know, that very core of that exchange and that reciprocity which seems so very natural in this world, is actually extremely unnatural. Uh, there's nothing, nothing like it in the Kingdom of Heaven. There's no exchange going on. You know, exchange this, or exchange money for goods and services, or trading, bartering, all the things that seem to be so common. So, it's really a, a path of emptying the mind, and that's why the trust that we've talked about is so important because you're having to trust in a guidance that's, that's leading you and taking you deeper into the stillness, and this guidance is taking you away from the, all those other mechanisms, uh, even the mechanism to survive. Uh, that, it seems like, the ego would say, well, there's some good mechanisms into that survival, built into that survival mechanism, and, and really, there aren't. There really aren't. It's, it's not kind of pie-in-the-sky thinking, it's like when you go through the miracles and through the mind training, you know, it's like, it just seems so natural, the, the new state of mind. To not have cares and worries, to not be concerned about making something, or, or achieving something, or accumulating something, or building something, you know, all those things just, just kind of ease up and ease up. 
And uh, I think, again, it can, can seem radical, I guess, to, in the way of the thinking of the ego. It can seem like a pretty radical path, except that when you're in it, and when you're going through the experience, everything seems so easy. It's almost like, how could I ever have been so afraid of this? It's just so simple and easy, and yet, from the ego perspective, it's, it's heavily guarded against. You know, the ego is going to find something wrong with it. Like it's going to try to poke a hole in in it and find some fault. You know, like it's it can't be true. To the ego, it's like yeah. In order for that to be true, you'd have to invert its whole thought system completely for that experience to be true. And that's really exactly what happens when you start to follow this experience. The entire thought system of the ego is completely, you know, inverted. And then it starts to be funny. It's almost you look at it and you start to laugh at it like, you know, how could I have ever seriously entertained those ideas? And when you start to laugh a lot, then that's, that's good news. That's the good news of the kingdom. <laughs>